from the KLIF 24-7 Newsroom. News and information, 570 AM, 96.3 FM, HD2. KLIF. A North Texas high school has uh, new some new cases of mumps, bringing the total to 27. That's all at Cedar Hill High School. And that was as of Friday. There may be more since then. And then there have been other mumps cases that have been reported uh, in Dallas and in Mesquite. And mumps is something that you don't hear much about until recently. That is, unless you go back a number of years. I had it when I was uh, a teenager. But that was a long time ago. And it's it's one of those things that we thought we had pretty well eradicated, except for the fact that a lot of people now are choosing not to have their children vaccinated. Dr. James Pinckney is a contagious disease expert. He founded Diamond Physicians in Dallas, and he joins me right now to talk about this. Good morning, doctor. Hey, good morning. This, How unusual is this in terms of, uh, you know, the, the modern era of medicine? Are we seeing uh, the return of mumps? Was, it, was that, uh, or maybe I'm just... Maybe I misunderstand. Maybe it's been with us the whole time. Well, we had a slight uptick in mumps back in 2006 and then again a few years ago. But typically, uh, this viral disease is, is held under control by vaccinations. But what can happen as parents decide not to vaccinate their children with something called herd immunity, in which the entire population needs to be 92% vaccinated or greater, you can start having outbreaks of these uh, viral diseases. Okay, why don't we start with uh, what, what is mumps? Well, mumps is a virus, viral infection, uh, and essentially you can get a fever, um, body aches. It can present a lot like the common cold or the flu. Uh, but then a couple, after a couple of days, you get swollen salivary glands. So that's when you get the, the puffy cheeks. Yeah. Uh, it can be pretty painful, uncomfortable, uh, and then it goes away a couple of days after that. Uh, you can get complications. Sometimes you can get um, serious infections uh, uh, of the brain uh, and other organs, but typically it's pretty self-limited, uh, and it's been more or less eradicated with the measles, mumps, uh, and rubella, the MMR vaccine that is administered as a child. When I was a kid, I was 17 at the time, and we're talking about mm, 1968, but uh, I remember the early the early symptoms for me were... Uh, I, my my jaw started to feel kind of tight, and if I move it around, it would kind of hurt a little bit. Not bad, but a little bit. And then I had these uh, noticeable lumps behind the uh, behind my earlobes where it connects with the jaw. So I guess that those are those are glands there. Is that uh, that about right for the onset of mumps? Yeah, that's where your parotid glands are, and that's exactly uh, the presentation. And then it and then it did as you said. It got worse to the point where kind of. My jaws uh, just kind of hurt all the time, and those, those uh, glands got bigger. Now, I remember, too, being told uh, by the doctor that as a teenage boy, I should stay down in bed because uh, if not, there could be complications uh, leading perhaps to sterility later in life. Is that is that true? Yeah. So they can you can definitely lead to, uh, lead to infertility issues uh, in boys, and that's why it's so important for parents to get their children vaccinated. I know there's been a lot of um, hearsay uh, and conspiracy theories with vaccinations recently in the last few years, but there still has been no medical evidence, so no actual clinical trials or clinical studies that link vaccinations to autism. Yeah, you know what? Uh, it always reminds me when I hear people talk about this and, and how so many people seem to follow a herd instinct when it comes to irrational fears, or at least fears that they don't personally know uh, are, are something they should be concerned about. It always reminds me of the people who said uh, they don't use their seatbelts in their cars because if they have a wreck, they, uh, they want to be thrown out of the car instead of trapped inside. But, <laughs> you know, it's only one in a million people who die while they're strapped inside the car, whereas you're much more likely to die if you get thrown out. I mean, it's the same. You're running a much bigger risk if you don't have the vaccine. That's exactly right. I like that analogy. Uh, we've got to kind of reinvigorate the, the vaccination 
push. Again, that herd immunity is very important. Uh, and it's, it's not only important for you, it's important for people that, that can't get vaccinated. So people that are immunocompromised, uh, certain individuals that have certain ailments that can't receive vaccines, you're actually protecting them as well. So it's not all about you. Uh, it also helps protect those uh, parents, children who cannot be vaccinated. Okay, how contagious is mumps and, uh, and, and who is most likely at risk to get it from somebody else? Uh, anybody in a crowded environment is going to be more at risk. So that's why you typically see outbreaks uh, at schools, uh, in college uh, dorms, people that are sharing utensils, uh, swapping saliva, kissing. Um, so it's, it's, it's very contagious. If you do have a fever, you should absolutely stay home. And the fever is defined as a temperature above 100.4 degrees Fahrenheit. So uh, stay home if you have a fever and do not share cups, utensils, uh, and that would be a great way. And, of course, get vaccinated. All right. And not uh, not typically life-threatening, though. Correct. Okay. Dr. Pinkney, thank you very much. Pleasure talking with oh, you this morning. Thanks for having me on. All right. There's Dr. Absolutely. James Pinkney, contagious disease expert. He founded Diamond Physicians here in Dallas. It's 5.55 now. Let's have another look at traffic with right now traffic on the fives. Bill Jackson. Well, be 